Hello, this is Reza Rat from Radacad. In this video, I'm going to talk about incremental refresh and hybrid tables in Power BI. What are these two different settings? How you set it up? How they can be used in Power BI? Let's check it out. To understand incremental refresh, let's first find out what is the scenario that you would use it. In Power BI, by default, when you have a table a data set, actually a data set that has some tables in it, every time you refresh the data or every time the schedule refresh happens in the scenario that the data is imported into Power BI, that uh, table's data would be totally um, removed, wiped out, and the new data loads in it. It's all one block of data, we call it one partition. So if you have a sales table, that entire sales table will be uh, removed, wiped out at the time of refresh and a new uh, data would uh, appear in it. Now this process is normally fine for uh, situations that the data is not really that much. It's just, uh, let's say millions of rows or something like that. But if we are talking about billions or trillions of rows of data, then there are some uh, consideration that can be done. One of them is aggregation, which I have like, explained in other articles. Uh, another is incremental refresh. So incremental refresh is talking about not loading the entire data when you refresh uh, your data set. When you refresh your data set, you might want to just load the last few years of data, the last periods that the data has changed, because you might have a table with uh, millions and billions of rows uh, that has sales transactions for 20 years. And the data of mm, like 19 years ago is not going to change. The data of uh, 18 years ago is not going to change. The data for the last year, for this year, these might change, but not those many years ago. So what then uh, we can do in Power BI is that we can create partitions. We can slice our data into different partitions. We can say this is a partition, all the data before, let's say up until last year, uh, and we refresh it once. Then from last year till now, we refresh it frequently. Um, and that is what incremental refresh actually does for us. Incremental refresh will create different partitions, depends on our settings, it will create these partitions. Uh, all of these partitions will build one table at the end, but then in Power BI, only the last partition gets refreshed, which is the most up-to-date. Um, part of the data and that is part of the data that uh, you expect to get changed. Now there are some configurations and settings about incremental refresh which I'm going to explain to you. Um, but one other thing is hybrid tables which, which is quite important to understand as well. Uh, and these two normally comes together because hybrid table you enable it on a data set that you on a table that you have incremental refresh set up on it. Hybrid table is for situations that you have that huge table and the data is changing. Um, if you have the data as an import mode, that means only when you refresh the data, you get the most up-to-date data. But you might say, well, for this current year, because the data is changing so much, I expect this part to be direct query so that I always get the most up-to-date data. But everything before that, I want it to be imported. This is what hybrid table does. Hybrid tables give you an option to have part of your data, like one partition, the latest partition, direct query, all other partitions to be imported. It's not dual storage mode that we have in aggregation. Dual storage mode is a totally different thing. Um, this uh, is uh, two different, uh, let's say, type of data loaded into one table, into different partitions, actually. One partition is import, another partition is direct query. The one, the last one that is getting up to date is direct query. Uh, hybrid table is premium only feature. That means you need to have PPU, premium per user, or premium capacity to use it. Okay, now uh, that you know about these different terminologies, let's go and see how this can be set up. So. Uh, to set up incremental refresh in Power BI, you need to have first have a few things set up beforehand. First, you need a data source that supports um, query folding. What is query folding? Query folding is uh, when you create a data transformation in Power Query in Power BI, it 
uh, it actually translate that into the language that the data source understands it, like T-SQL, that SQL Server data source understands it, and pass it to that data source. I have another article and video about query folding, make sure to go and check it out. Uh, if your data source is not supporting query folding, you can still set up incremental refresh, but there's no point because the whole point of incremental refresh is that when I connect to that data source, instead of reading the data of 20 years and just loading um, and just updating the most recent up, uh, data, I go and just read the latest records and the changes. Uh, when you connect to a CSV file, to an Excel file, you don't have that option of just reading part of the file. You are reading the entire file. And for most of the cases, um, those data sources that have big data, they normally are database systems like Excel file. You don't expect this to have more than 1 million records. You can't store more than 1 million records in Excel file. So um, usually those sources are supporting query folding anyway. That is one thing. Another thing is that um, the licensing, you need pro licensing for incremental refresh. You would uh, require premium or PPU if you want to use hybrid tables. And the last thing is that your tables need to have a date field, a date field that can be filtered so that you can say, for example, give me uh, the last year of data based on that date field. Now I'm going to show this on this data set that I have some AdventureWorks data, sales data loaded into here. So I have um, two sales table, internet sales, reseller sales, and some other tables in here as well. Now, uh, first thing you need to do to get the incremental refresh setup is you need two parameters. They have to be defined exactly with these names range start range end remember power query is case sensitive so range start range end these has to be date time parameter the way you create it is go you come to power query editor using transform data in here you go and create a new parameter now i already have these parameters defined so i'm not going to create a new parameter but these parameters their name is important the data type should be date time the current value can be anything, just enter a value and their value will be overwritten by the incremental refresh setup in Power BI service. So you don't really need to worry much about the value. So you would need two of these, range start and range end. After you create that, then you go to the table that you want to set up incremental refresh on it. Let's say internet sales or reseller sales. I'll go to reseller sales, for example. Um, you have to filter that date field and that can be done by going to that date field, uh, selecting filter, date time filters, you choose between and then um, in these between settings, instead of entering the date actual, enter the date uh, itself, you go and select a parameter, range start, parameter, range end. Uh, and that would give you all the records that are between range start and range end. Again, you don't have to worry about these dates. They will be automatically set by Power BI itself. So once you have done that, which I have done it already, uh, then your model is ready. You just close and apply. Now I have done already that part. Um, so one part is setting those parameters. Another part is then going to the table that you have, right clicking on that table, and choosing incremental refresh. Uh, when you go to there, um, if you don't have incremental refresh set up, you'll see your table like that, and then you can enable the incremental refresh. Like for example, I'll show you on Dim Customer what happens. If I go to incremental refresh on Dim Customer, you see it is not set up and I cannot enable it because those parameters has not have not been used in Dim Customer. So you have to use those parameters in the Power Query for those so that you can enable it here. For fact internet sales, however, I have those parameters used and I have previously enabled it. Uh, you can enable it just like that. You turn on this incremental refresh. Uh, there are some notification about query folding, some of the settings that might require premium, such as the hybrid tables, things like that. I'll go through these in detail. So first you choose how many, uh, like what is the period you want to keep that data. So let's say I want to keep like 10 years of data or 20 years of data. You go and select that and enter that. And it's not just years, you can choose quarter, month, days, whatever. And then you might say, well, keep the last 10 years, but only refresh the last one year of data. Or you might just say one quarter. So these 
these two doesn't need to be exactly the same period. You can keep 10 years of data, but only refresh the last quarter because you expect changes in that uh, period. And all of these dates automatically set based on that. So that is basically your incremental refresh setup, really simple and nothing in particular. And these are going to set those start and range, start and range and date behind the scene for you. Another thing which is quite important here is this option. This is for hybrid tables only. Uh, remember that I told you that you can have a table that the latest partition, instead of being imported in the time of refresh, it keeps as a direct query. It is a premium only feature. Um, your data set should be only published to a premium workspace, premium capacity or premium per user workspace to use it. So if you enable it, then you wouldn't be able to publish it into a normal workspace. So remember that. But if you enable it, it's just as simple as that. You just enable it and then um, and then save or apply or whatever. At the bottom here, it shows you a um, kind of diagram of what it looks like. So our selection is that we want to keep 10 years of data. The last year is getting refreshed, but uh, but I have this direct query, so it is, it's not exactly real time, it is near real time. If you look at my previous video about real time data sets in Power BI, you know what I mean about it's not exactly real time. Uh, so that is the setup. Or if I disable this, then the last partition getting refreshed, so there is no near real time or direct query setting. There are also other settings here as well. Like for example, by default, this is not going to be uh, like the entire year if you are in the middle of the year. So you might say, I want to refresh complete year. So if the year is not completed, don't refresh it. You see, when I don't select it, um, it is refreshing all the way. Um, the last partition is 22 actually. But when I say only refresh complete year, because 22 is not completed yet as, uh, as of right now, uh, it will consider the last partition to be 21. Uh, the other one is detect data changes. Now in some database systems, in some operational systems, I'd say, uh, there is a field such as modified date, created date that would be updated based on when that record is updated in the source system. For example, there's a CRM system that as soon as a user goes and change something in that uh, operational system, uh, there will be a change in the database and a modified date based on that. So if you have a field like that, you can select it here and this will monitor that date and will only fetch those records after that date. It will make your incremental refresh better. So if you have a field like that, definitely make sure to check it. Okay, so that's pretty much all the settings. I have done these settings like this basically, uh, but I'm not going to change it. And uh, you can do this on every table that you want to have incremental refresh on it. For example, in this table, I have incremental refresh on a monthly basis. So I'm saying that only keep the last five months of data uh, and refresh only the last one month. So you can choose whatever you want, all the settings that you want. After doing this, then you just save and publish your model. Now, as I said, because I used hybrid table setting, that checkbox, it only allows me to publish it into a premium workspace and it also let me know about that. But incremental refresh itself is not a premium only feature. You can use it without, um, without um, premium. You can use it with pro basically. So one part of it is that after you set it up here, then in Power BI website, you'll have your data set. Uh, and this is a data set that I have. I can hit it refresh here, or I can schedule it to refresh. So uh, the very first refresh would be always full load, those old partitions. And after that, all other refreshers would only update the latest partition in every table. And for those tables that doesn't have incremental refresh, it would be full load for those. Now, one thing to remember is that the data set that you have set incremental refresh for that, you cannot download this file. If I click on download the file, I'll get a message that this file cannot be downloaded because it has multiple partitions. And normally because it's a huge file, you do incremental refresh on huge files. Uh, it's not a good idea to download it anyway. So, um, so then how do you see those partitions behind the scene? If you have premium uh, capacity or premium per user workspace, you can use this method. You can go to setting of the workspace 
under the setting there is a server setting which you can copy your um, URL and then from a tool like SQL Server Management Studio you can connect to there uh, or other tools such as Tabular Editor would do that as well using uh, SQL Server Management Studio which is Microsoft tool itself you can connect to analysis services paste that URL here this is called XML endpoint uh, set the authentication to Azure Active Directory Universal with MFA type in your Power BI account after the authentication you should you should be able to connect to your data set so this is that data set these are my tables if my table doesn't have any incremental refresh when I right click on it and go to partitions I should see one partition only having all the data of that table uh, but if my table has partition and has incremental refresh set up, then I should see a list of partitions. So dim customer doesn't have incremental refresh. I have 18,000 records, one partition. But something like fact internet sales, when I go to the partitions, because it has incremental refresh set up on a yearly basis, I have one partition per year in here, all the way to 2021. And the last one, which is 2022, is direct query so and it will continue keeping like that now when 2023 starts 2022 would be imported and 2023 would be direct query uh, power bi automatically keeps this updated and by that time 2011 will be perhaps removed because we said only keep 10 years of data if you want to keep more you'll have the option to select more than that. Uh, these partitions can be based on your settings. For example, in the other table that I set partitions to be, I think, monthly basis. Here you can see those partitions based on the month, quarter to month four, five, six, quarter three, month seven, eight, nine. And the last one, which is month 10, which is right now, is direct query. So this is uh, basically the um, hybrid table and incremental refresh. Remember you set it on data sources that supports query folding, normally huge amount of data. You want to only update the latest records of it. Uh, you can also use hybrid tables, which means you keep the last part as a direct query. But if you use that, remember it is a premium per user or uh, premium capacity licensing only. Um, otherwise, everything else about incremental refresh is pro feature. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me down in the description below. You can find the link to uh, my blog, which explains this and has some links to study more. I hope you liked this video. If you go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel, we'll have more videos on Power BI Weekly. Thank you. Bye.